Welcome back to the Missouri 2018 ballot primer. I'm D, and so far we've gone through all of the amendments and we're on to the propositions. The first one up for discussion is Proposition B, and just in case you're wondering where Proposition A is, the people actually won on that one over the summer, so keep up. Ooh, I love me some Prop B, because this the one with money in it. Do you want to amend Missouri law to... Increase the state minimum wage to $8.60 per hour with $0.85 cents per hour increase each year until 2023 when the state minimum wage would be $12 per hour. Exempt government employers from the above increase and increase the penalty for paying employees less than the minimum wage. So this proposition would raise the state's minimum wage to $8.60 per hour in 2019. It would then continue to increase by 85 cents every year until 2023 when ultimately it will be $12 per hour. This would only increase the minimum wage for those in the private sector and government employees would be exempt from this. And this would make the punishment harsher for those who pay their employees less than the minimum wage, but honestly, it's just a second slap on the wrist. So here's the nitty gritty on Prop B. It increases the minimum wage to $8.60 per hour in 2019. It increases the minimum wage 85 cents every year until 2023, at which time the minimum wage would be $12 per hour. After 2023, minimum wage would increase or decrease each year based on changes in the consumer price index for urban wage earners and clerical workers. Employers caught underpaying their employees will be required to pay twice the amount of unpaid wages when caught, and as I said, government employees are exempt from the wage increase. Bam! Just like that, there's another important thing on which we need to vote this year, and I'm loving it. So let's simplify this. $12 an hour right now is still less than what's considered a livable wage in this country. Wages will have to increase eventually, so the decision before you is really whether to vote for this now and then build upon it, or wait for a better ballot to come along later. Now, if you've been watching the debates, you might have heard this argument. I'm going to vote no on that particular pr uh, provision. Uh, I think that uh, we need a w ra wage increase and we need it across the board. And one of the things, that, but I'm going to vote no on the, on the Missouri measure because I'm worried that it will raise uh, the minimum here quickly and out of step uh, with other states. I don't want to see jobs lost. Yeah, Josh Hawley's messaging pretty much toes the Republican line. And I'm not making a judgment call. I'm not condemning Republicans or Josh Hawley with that statement. I just calls it like I sees it. I also keeps it real. And to keep it real, their position is a reasonable one. The position being that it could hurt us competitively when attracting new business into Missouri if our minimum wage were higher than our neighboring states. But before you throw out that sweet, sweet baby, consider this. There are currently 27 states that already have a higher minimum wage than Missouri. Seven states are already planning to have a minimum wage of $12 an hour or higher by 2023. On a different note, Missouri's current minimum wage is about half of what is considered a livable wage right now. And the cost of living is definitely going to go up over the next five years. It's practically guaranteed that other states will be increasing their minimum wage before 2023. And lastly, change needs to start somewhere. Missourians deserve to get paid a fair wage for a fair day's work, and $7.85 an hour is not fair. Not when the average take-home pay for somebody working full-time on minimum wage is $290 a week and the median rent for a one-bedroom in Missouri is $771 a month. And companies don't just come here because we're cheap. They come here because we're a center staging platform for all kinds of business, and we're in the middle of the country, and we have always been the gateway to the West. Missouri deserves better than this. Missourians are worth more than this. We're worth more than this. There are those out there who don't feel this goes far enough, such as Fight for 15, with whom I'm aligned. But I gotta tell you, it's a good start. Don't squash this just because it's not exactly what you want. Change has to start somewhere. Let it be here. Of course, there are also those who oppose it, but not for the standard Republican reason. You know, I've seen a few hate posts about this recently, and one of them sticks out in my mind especially clearly. It was something to the effect of, the guy who flips burgers doesn't deserve $12 an hour because that's what an EMT makes. Well, that's a big duh, you ding dong. Of course the guy who flips burgers deserves $12 an hour because that's what it costs to live in this country. And the EMT is then faced with a choice. They can either continue being an EMT or they can go flip burgers for lots of less responsibility and the exact same wage. And then the employers of the EMT have a choice before them. They can either pay the EMT more or they can not have an EMT. Legislation like this improves everybody's wage from the ground up. 
which improves everybody's quality of life and also happens to help the economy by thwarting one of the biggest threats to a functional flowing economy, circulation stagnation. That is something that occurs when wealth isn't allowed to circulate throughout the entire system but instead gets hoarded at one point. People at the very top of the corporate ladder are making a lot more money than the rest of us and I'm not saying that they shouldn't make that money or that they should make less money. I'm simply saying that when they have that money, they're not moving it around because they're not paying back debts or, or buying things that they need. They've already paid them or they've already got them. If you give the money to the poor people, what are they going to do with it? They're going to pay back debts. They're going to buy things that they need, which is going to get money moving from person A to person B to person C, which is ultimately going to help the economy. Look, you need more to live on. We all do. Everyone who's listening to this has a debt that they need to pay or they have something they need to buy, be it medical debt or tuition or a house or a car. And every one of us could benefit from a higher minimum wage. Every time the minimum wage increases, it increases the pay of those making above minimum wage. This is minimum wage, this is you. Every time the minimum wage increases, it increases your pay. And yeah, usually that gap gets a little bit tighter. That's another problem. That's not this problem. Don't deny people things that they need just so you can feel that much more superior to them. And to those people who actually buy into that post about the burger flipper, just let me say this. Whatever choices that person made in their life to get to the position they're in, they still deserve to make enough money to live on. Do us all a favor, vote yes on this, and let's get the ball rolling and the money moving. Surprise, surprise. Proposition B is a big check, yes. That's it for now. Up next is Proposition C. I'll see you there. Big kiss. Bye-bye.